I mentioned earlier in the instruction video for the beginning of this week that Tim O'Brien's The Things They Carry is actually a novel. So the excerpt that I've asked you all to read is merely a portion of that book. Uh, before I begin, I want to say I'm going to be reading a little bit off the screen so I don't get distracted. Um, so forgive me. And I've also broken this up into two parts because it's a longer short story. Um, so without any further ado, Emma's going to join us. Um, the things they carried. So our story begins with the following. First Lieutenant Jimmy Cross carried letters from a girl named Martha. They were not love letters, but Jimmy Cross was hoping. The letters weighed 10 ounces. At dusk, he would carefully return the letters to his rucksack. Slowly, a bit distracted, he would get up and move among his men. Then, at full dark, he'd return to his foxhole and wonder if Martha was a virgin. So in our the first bit of this opening paragraph, we learn a few things. Um, Jimmy Cross, is uh, the first lieutenant, which means he's the commanding officer of the platoon of soldiers. Um, it even says that um, he would move among his men, so he's responsible for their warfare. Secondly, we learned that he has this kind of ongoing, continuing relationship with um, this girl named Martha. Um, and I don't know if it's as much of a relationship as it is wishful thinking or this fascination um, with her, but it's clear from us, uh, from the narration, that it's not a romantic relationship, um, as much as you might hope it could be that way one day. Um, but he realizes now, at this point in time, Martha is not particularly interested in him. However, the letters and the photos, as we see later on, are value to him because they represent a connection to something from home which leads us to um, this discussion about his obsessiveness of whether or not Martha is, is a virgin. In one sense, it's natural, I suppose, I'm not a young guy, but I, I guess it's natural because he is a young man um, to wonder about these things. Remember, um, he's merely 24 years old. Um, he's young and it's probably natural to wonder about potential love interest and what their experiences have been in the past. Um, but I do think it's also something deeper in there, um, this idea of virginity, this idea of purity, the idea of innocence, the idea that something is unspoiled, untouched. And remember, Martha is at home uh, back in the States, a world away from the jungles of Vietnam. She is, for all intents and purposes, a virgin. She is unspoiled. She is innocent of the knowledge of what's happening in the jungles of Vietnam and the horrors of war and their experiences that they have there. So Jimmy is very much a part of this world and in some ways he wants to escape it and Martha's letters and photographs are um, a way for him to do that. He's found himself in a world and circumstances that he didn't create, he didn't make, he was thrust into them. Like many of the soldiers in the Vietnam War, they were drafted, they didn't have a choice. So already at his very young age, being confronted with this very trying experience, um, he also bears this great weight of responsibility because he is the leader um, and the commanding officer. Um, so throughout the story, the narrator gives us this criteria for um, the things that they carry. I mean, that's a continuing motif. It's a continuing phrase. It's something that I means it's the title of the novel. It's the title of the story. Um, so he talks a lot about the things that they carry. But the first criteria um, of the things that they carry is out of necessity. Uh, what do they need to survive? And they have the regulatory gear that each man is given, like can openers, dog tags, Kool-Aid, chewing gum, cigarettes, mosquito repellent. Um, the list really goes on and on. But whatever uh, equipment a soldier would need to take into a mission. So, and the narrator tells us that all of this stuff collectively weighs about 15 to 20 pounds. Um, so the things that they carry are... Um, out of necessity and each man has a different need. So for example, um, Jimmy Cross, um, part of his, what he needs out of necessity are his letters or his photographs. Henry Dobbins, the big guy, um, he carries extra food, extra rations. Um, I think he's also the one who carries the pantyhose around his neck. Um, uh, 
Jensen carries, uh, he's worried about hygiene, so he carries an extra toothbrush and, and, and dental floss and Ted Lavender. Um, we, every time we hear Ted Lavender's name, it's, it's mentioned um, along with the fact that he's scared. He's scared. Um, and because he's scared by necessity, um, he carried something to allay the fear. Uh, uh, he carries tranquilizers, he carries marijuana, um, and those are numbing agents, something that should uh, allay the, the anxiety and fear that he has. Kiowa, our American Indian soldier, um, carries an illustrated New Testament, but he also carries a distrust of the white man, hedge against uh, the bad times. He carries his grandfather's hatchet. So by necessity, uh, Kiowa marries the old and the new, the old world and the new world. Um, necessity um, also dictated that they carry um, this nylon covered jacket, which added another seven pounds because everything's booby trapped. Um, and just as an aside, I don't want to get too much into it. Um, because I, I hope that we'll talk about it in our discussion boards, but each of the things that the men carry are very individualized to them. And they also represent something that, that makes them human. Um, for example, I can't remember, Rat Riley maybe, is the guy who carries the comic books. Um, he wants to maintain um, humor. Jimmy Cross, he carries the letters because he wants to keep his ability to love. Um, but as an aside, I digress. Um, so the narrator also says that, um, to carry something was to hump it. And it's important to recognize that expression, I think, um, to hump it. Um, the very notion of that idea indicates to us that it is an effort. It is an exertion. It is heavy. It is tiring. And this will become a recurring idea throughout the selection that it's exhausting to deal with all that equipment. Um, and the weight of what they carry physically and psychologically. Criteria number two is partly out of function and rank. Um, criteria three, field specialty. And each of, um, each of these soldiers has additional items that they carry based on their rank and their job within the platoon. Um, Ted Lavender, again, um, because he is scared, um, carried 34 rounds. He went down under an exceptional burden, more than 20 pounds of ammunition, plus everything else, plus the unweighted fear. Early on, we're told Ted Lavender is not carrying the standard 20 uh, pounds of issued gear, but another, oh, he's not only carrying the 20 pounds of uh, uh, standard issued gear, but he's also carrying another additional 20 pounds of ammunition with the tranquilizers, with the marijuana, and the fear. So our narrator is trying to communicate to us that these men carry physical items with physical weight and gravity, but they're also carrying psychological burdens that don't have specific weight, and yet they're so incredibly heavy and oppressive. Uh, they carry all they can bear, and then some, including a silent awe of the terrible power of the things they carry. Um, and then... As we move along through the story, Jimmy adds to this burden, right? He adds to this burden a good luck charm, a pebble. Um, and I think the, the description of this this pebble, the color, the and all that is, is very interesting. And I hope we'll talk about it in the discussion boards a little bit. But it's a pebble that Martha finds and sends him. And she found it on the Jersey shoreline. Her description, I think, of this pebble um, says a lot about their relationship and Jimmy's status in general. Um, she found it precisely where the land touched the water at high tide, where things came together but also separated. And in a sense, that's how Jimmy and Martha are, right? They're together yet separate, the connection that they have. Um, but um, in a sense, uh, hold on, let's this. Um, they're separated from the world, not only physically, but also by the knowledge of war and the experiences that they've gone through. Jimmy can never again be a part of Martha's world in the way that he wants to be. And just so, um, when and if any of the men uh, go back home, they'll never be the same. They'll forever be separate. Um, so I think it's a good kind of foreshadowing that that 
the ir irony um, that we get with that gift. Um, yes, let me give you the gift of separation. Um, but I digress. Anyways, um, we see through this that Lieutenant Cross is seeking this 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 infatuation with the stone, with the letters. Uh, that he's seeking this connection with something, this human connection that's a part. Um, it's not of Vietnam. That's not of the experience that he's living. I mean, he puts it in his mouth and he tastes it like he wants to. I mean, it's a very physical um, relationship that he that he has with this stone that I think is so interesting. Um, but he has difficult because of this because of this distraction he has difficulty keeping um, his attention on the war again there's that constant temptation for him to be um, distracted and daydreaming um, so um, another criteria that our author gives us is that they carried um, what they carried is um, by mission and if the mission seemed particularly hazardous or a place that they knew to be bad, they carried everything that they could. Um, some of them were more complicated and required specific equipment. But despite, but this brings me to April 16th, um, the day Ted Lavender leaves us. Excuse me. Despite the fact that um, my husband, he's a veteran, he did two tours of duty in um, Afghanistan and, and Despite that, because he, he's a military guy, um, despite that, my knowledge of military operations and uh, military procedure is very limited um, at best. My knowledge of the Vietnam uh, or the specifics of the Vietnam War is even more so. Um, as an aside, my, my father in law is a Vietnam vet, so he's kind of talked a little bit about it, but I digress. Um, what I do understand, what I do know, is that um, for the soldiers, there were long periods of, of very tedious times, um, moving and marching through the jungle um, that were punctuated um, by periods of intense action. Um, so soldiers could go for weeks with a, without doing anything, um, just walking from location to location. Um, with very little to concretely accomplish, which I'm going to come back to that in another section of, of this lecture. But um, one of the things that distinguished the Vietnam War from other engagements is that the Viet Cong built, built these very elaborate tunnel systems. And this was a way for them to move equipment and men through the jungle without being seen. Um, and so a lot of the effort um, by American troops was to um, destroy these tunnels and destroy the Viet Cong's ability to move men and supplies to the jungle. Uh, but this was extremely dangerous and you can appreciate, I think, that if you were entering into a tunnel, you don't know what you're going to find, you don't know what you're going to encounter, and um, you may in, in fact encounter another soldier and just from a defensive position it's, it's terrifying you're very vulnerable you don't know what's down there and the men who are there um really have the advantage so clearing these tunnels is what jimmy's platoon is assigned to do and apparently they take turns uh, being the first down the tunnel looking around to see what's down there and on april 16th the the day that in question uh lee strunk drew uh, the number 17. And notice, however, that Jimmy Cross is, uh, what he's doing, he's he's moving to the tunnel and he's leaning down, he's examining the darkness, um, and he thinks about, oh, it's trouble, what if it caves in? Um, and then suddenly, without willing it, he was thinking about Martha. He tried to concentrate on the strunk, the war, the dangers, but his love was too much. He felt paralyzed. And I think that, that, that we can appreciate that, that, that I mean, that, that idea of being paralyzed um, I do know what that's like, um, but um, that being paralyzed uh, by by fear, we can appreciate that that in this situation of extreme stress and danger for all of them, um, and and he has no. I mean, it's kind of a defense coping mechanism for him to go to a place to check out mentally, um, to escape that his brain his brain won't let him process. Um, the danger, but 
um, I think we can feel some sympathy for him there um, and recognize this in ourselves.